It's called education. Like we have to educate students first and foremost. But there's this push, of course, to bring in these political ideologies, gender ideologies, all of these things, and to, in a system that's already failing our students, we'll get to the latest test scores coming up in a moment, but uh, Senate Bill 5462, the stated purpose is, it says it's an act relating to promoting inclusive learning standards and instructional materials in public schools. Oh, goody, 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 goody. Let's see what they mean by that. So uh, let's go on to this section. It says, by June 1st, 2025, the Washington State School Directors Association, with the assistance of the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction, must review and update a model policy and procedure regarding course design, selection, and adoption of instructional materials. The model policy and procedure must require that the school board of directors adopt inclusive curricula and select diverse, equitable, inclusive, age-appropriate instructional materials that include the histories, contributions, and perspectives of historically marginalized and underrepresented groups, including but not limited to Native Americans and Native American tribes, people from various racial and ethnic backgrounds, including but not limited to African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, and Pacific Islander Americans, women, people from various socioeconomic statuses, people from various religious backgrounds, immigrants and refugees, people with disabilities, people who are neurodiverse, people who are English learners or use sign language and LGBTQ people as defined in RCW. Remember when Dory had the woke word dice? I feel like that is a segment from his show that we should steal. He's like woke word dice. Could you fit more lefty talking points into a single bill than that? The other thing in there, you know, there's all these things. It's like, okay, yeah, if you're having instructional materials or whatever it is and books about, yeah, I, I don't think that it should be only books about white characters. Like, yeah, I, I get that. And I don't think anybody's arguing that it should. But when you fit in all these other things, People from various religious backgrounds. What kind of religious stuff are you teaching? Like, I don't want religion of any kind taught in our schools, and I don't think that it needs to be. And also, uh, people who are neurodiverse. So that can mean autism, which I think, you know, having um, autistic students be able to learn more, hear stories about people who are, artist are autistic and overcome that or whatever it is. But if you go to TikTok on any given day, you'll see all these weird purple-haired people saying they're neurodivergent. Because they just, it's like they have all these different meanings for it that aren't like autism or something like that. And so it's just this, I think, a completely manufactured word that encompasses all these people who think they're different, like learn differently. Um, so this is ridiculous. But uh, the I'll read the intent really quick because I think it's important before I get to why this is so off base. Uh, it says, it is the intent and purpose of this section to guarantee that each common school district board of directors, whether or not acting through its respective administrative staff, be held accountable for the proper operation of their district to the local community and its electorate. So there's a couple sentences I read for you there that I really want you to ponder given everything that we've talked about with public education. Uh, one of the things in here when I was reading the, the long list of policies that would be implemented, it says that it, the model policy has to be age-appropriate instructional material. When have they ever concerned themselves with whether something is age-appropriate? And what does age-appropriate even mean in our public schools anymore? How many books and lessons have we told you about recently that any sane person would say is absolutely not age appropriate. We've talked about some of the sex ed lessons being taught to kindergartners by Planned Parenthood not, that had pictures of vaginas and penises with like cats drawn on them and weird stuff. Not age appropriate by, by any stretch of the imagination. We talked about what was taught to fourth and fifth graders in Mar Vista Elementary School that, oh, uh, doctors, when you're born, they just take a guess about whether you're a man or a woman. And you might not be. And you, you might find out when you're five years old that you're not what the doctor said you were. Uh, and reading a book called A is for Activists, where they talk about all these far left military political uprisings as like this good, glorious thing. So spare me the age appropriate. We're way past the point of age appropriate. But then in this, that part I just read to you where it says the intent and purpose of this is to guarantee that all the school districts in our state uh, be held accountable for the proper operation of their district to the local community and its electorate. When has our public school system ever concerned itself with being accountable to the electorate on anything else? Every time we raise questions 
about these lessons that are taught in schools or the public school teachers in Seattle who are filming themselves out openly breaking the law during acts of unrest. What is the response we get every single time from the public school system? Oh, we can't discuss that. That's a personnel issue. They're not accountable to the electorate. They could not care less. But what the Democrats want is for them to be accountable on this, on diversity, on inclusivity, on making sure that you're talking about LGBTQ issues and neurodivergent issues and immigrants and refugees. That's the thing that they want public schools to be held accountable on. And, and one of the worst things that this does is it gives the superintendent of public instruction and a bunch of bureaucrats in Olympia power over what local school districts in very diverse places across the state think is appropriate to teach their kids. So this means that you could be a public school district in eastern Washington in a rural area, and you are going to be accountable to the government bureaucrats in Olympia to be teaching LGBTQ issues, issues about neurodiversity, immigrants and refugees and whatever it is, all the trigger words. So in Seattle, they're probably already doing this stuff. And this is the thing. This is really what I want to stress. In the progressive areas, because this is a progressive agenda, the progressive schools are already doing this. They don't need a state law to tell them to institute all these diverse and inclusive lessons. So what this law is about is forcing the other local school districts who have rejected those ideologies in schools and tried to focus on core learning and education and improving test scores, this is about making them do it too. This is about forcing a progressive agenda on all the local schools at every level across the state in areas that aren't progressive, where parents do not want this stuff, where parents want them focused on teaching their kids the basics. That's what's so awful about this. It's taking more and more local control away from public schools, and it's essentially threatening them. You can cut funding. I mean, if this is a law that schools are required to institute this, this is about if you don't do it, there will be consequences for it. It's about making a progressive curriculum for if you have a, a student in school for any school, any public school in our state, no matter if parents or the school board don't want it. It's about what the superintendent of public instruction wants. Meanwhile, where are the test scores? We revisit this every time we talk about one of these bonkers stories related to education. Uh, ELA standards in our state, statewide, 50% of students meeting ELA standards. 39% of students meeting math standards. 43% of students meeting science standards. Only 70% of students are attending class regularly. All of that we're spending now $18,000 plus per pupil for test scores to be in the toilet, for a big chunk of our public school students not to be attending class regularly. And this is the kind of crap they're focused on in Olympia. Social, political, gender, ideology, and folding it into every aspect of education. And if you're a school district that doesn't want to do it, well, too freaking bad will take your money away from you. This is about making every school district in the state the Seattle Public School District. And I say that completely absent hyperbole because that's the direction we're heading.